was very unsettled. You were unsettled when I met you. Very. It was so funny because I, I remember I was, I was talking to some guys the other night in the green room about when I met you. I was like, I had come to L.A. and I was just so not used to actors. I was so not used to those kind of people. But I was so used to like comics and degenerate pool hall people. And then I met you, and I was like, oh, I know you. This is a like, combination. Like, I knew you. I knew you right away. You and I became friends Quickly. like that. Quickly. Like that. I remember, like, there's so many people that got weirded out by you. It was so funny when I bring you around, like, news radio. <laughs> With the leather Joey, jacket. Joey would go with Joey was building a football player back then. And you would go into the fucking the green room where all the the executives and you were eating all the shrimp cocktail. <laughs> and they were like they were scared to say anything because like the that room was separated from everybody else's green room. So they had their own thing where they go in there and the, everything was catered and beautiful and champagne and and you just strolled in there and started eating shrimp cocktail. And they're like, who's this criminal looking fellow who's eating our shrimp cocktail? Well, they had the table with the, the regular food and I remember they had chili. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget that. They had the best chili in the world. I was broke. I was hungry and I must have ate 10 bowls of it. Mm. And then I looked over and there's all these little white dudes with, you know, ha 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 ha. You know, and I'm like, what the fuck? And they had the jumbo shrimp and the thing. <laughs> so I walked right in there, right past them. They're like, huh? and I just started mingling with them. Great show. Great trip. <laughs> Tremendous actor, Andy Dick. And that was it. And then they came to you and you were dying to laugh. And you're like, Joey, you can't. They just won't. And then the time with the man show. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, we had some times with that one. I think the first, like, eight years, you were like, ah, I don't know if I can handle this guy. What are you talking about? Then I, remember I did my best. Do you remember at Stand Up New York <laughs> with Sussman when I went off on the owner? You oh, yeah. remember that? Oh, yeah. During August, like, for Fear Fact, and we went in there. And he's like, you're not going to get a spot tonight. And I go, I didn't ask for a fucking spot, you asshole. He just looked at me and Sussman was like, what the fuck, Joey? I didn't like that dude, so. Uh, but no, at the beginning, I know that you were like shaking your head. Like, <laughs> this guy's not. Yeah, uh, but it made me comfortable. I, I love being around you because you, you I, I know people like you. I understand you. Like, I didn't understand actors. It was it made me so uncomfortable because I never knew who they really were. I never knew what they really thought. They, they were never, like, present with you. Not all of them, you know, but it was just like there was enough of them out there that were trying to make it in Hollywood, and they were putting on a show for everybody, everywhere they went. So you never really knew who they were. You know, with you, I was like, right away, I was like, oh, I know guys like you. Like, right away. It was rough those couple years because I would go to meetings and stuff, and people would go, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, you were rough. You were rough. Rough. Dude. I was like, I don't know. And then I remember I went to HBO. Somebody got me a meeting at HBO, like in 98. And I had no success at all. Like, I wasn't having any success at all, except for the comedy store. And I went to that meeting. And something, like, I went with, like, actors and uh -huh. agents. And you know how proper they are. Like, yeah. This is an idea about the future of this show. Right. And I could just take it for so long. And I just went. And I talked about growing up in a funeral parlor, picking up bodies, going to fucking JFK and bringing the bodies back and slinging them in the mouth. The guy's body, the mouth would open on the body because my friend had a funeral parlor. And they were like, hold on one second. This is stunning. And I just started going off on them, and they're like, we, we want to hear more. Put these together in notes for me. And I was like, okay. And then after the new year, I gave them the notes, and I was on fire. Like, and I didn't tell anybody about this. Some guy hip pocketed me and took me to a meeting, and that was Six Feet Under. Oh. So we were on. Like, I was like, okay, okay. And they were like, we don't know if this is going to work. But then they turned me down. They go, we like the idea, but funeral ideas haven't worked. After This went on for like two months. And then they, six months later, fucking Six Feet Under came out. Oh, they just took your idea. I don't know. I don't think they took my Listen, idea. Listen, that thought, happens all the time. I thought they had it in development. But you my idea so? was completely different. It was about two hoodlums right. who worked in a funeral parlor. Right. It wasn't about whatever that show turned out. But I think this, the concept is just constantly handling dead people. There's something about that that never was really covered before. That's got to affect the way people th see life. I remember the first time I saw my grandfather was in an open casket. And the first time I saw his body, I remember immediately, it was very interesting. Because one of the first things I felt was like, 
oh, he's not there. You know, like, it's not just that someone's not alive anymore. Like, he wasn't there. I, that was when I started wondering, like, I wonder if a soul is a real thing. I wonder what that is, that, that, that concept of what is the force inside of someone that causes them to be alive. You sense it when you're around them. Because the strange thing about dead bodies is not just that they're a human body that's dead. It's also that there's no one there. It, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have a feeling that's very intangible. There's a feeling when you're around a person. Like, there's a person there. When the person's not there, it's like, oh, he's not there anymore. There's no energy. There's yeah. nothing coming from the body. There's no nothing. It's not as simple as the heart's not beating and the lungs aren't catching oxygen. It's something more. It's like you feel it. You know, I don't know if it's real. And it's also, when you're looking at a, a body that's um, in an open casket, it's been drenched in formaldehyde and covered in makeup. It's very odd. Very odd. Now, they say that when you die, you lose how much pounds? That's not, I don't think that's real. That's because 21 they, grams, I Yeah, think 21 is. grams. That's yeah. a movie that yeah. that dude made. Well, let's see if that, is that, what was that based on? That was based on some sort of a study, but from what I understand, it's not real. I don't think your soul would weigh anything. Why would it have to weigh anything? It's just a spirit. Yeah. like It's just yeah. an energy. Well, does electricity weigh anything? I grew up going to a lot of wakes early in them. Yeah. You know, when you watch The Sopranos, they go to a wake every other week. Mm -hmm. In Jersey, you're in a wake every other week. I've been to, I've been there three years, and I already could have gone to like 18 wakes. I've been to maybe two or three of them. But in three years, that's, wakes are big. But you look at the whole process of a wake. I would never let my daughter go to a wake now until she's 18 just because the effects it did to me i don't remember my father's wake but i remember my friend's wakes from grammar school and i remember my mother's wakes and those three wakes fucked me up to the point where somebody else died when i was like a a junior or a senior in high school and i didn't go to that wake like i was like i'm enough for wake. i've had enough of wakes it, i don't think it's healthy I, I don't know for me it wasn't I got exposed to it at a young age, and it just, it wasn't healthy, man. It fucked with me for a long time. I watched The Exorcist. It didn't fuck with me as long as those, as much as those caskets fucked with me. So when my buddy had the funeral party years later, I volunteered for the job because I didn't want to have that creepiness between mm. us, and that eliminated. I saw how he responded to it. It was like an everyday thing. It was like you lifting kettlebells. Him picking up a dead body, putting him yeah. down. You know, I saw how he... You get numb. You, you're you numb to that. Yeah. That's that's the... You know, but it's so weird how... It's like the number one career to get into. And really? nobody will get into. Think about it. It pays off the bat. 